In November 1990, Chandrasekhar took over a government that was destined to fail. It was forged as a marriage of convenience between Chandrasekhar and Rajiv Gandhi's Congress and its allies. The government was formed with 60 breakaway Janata Dal MPs and was propped up from the outside by the Congress and its allies. Unstable from the very start, the government had just one goal – to ease out a common political enemy, VP Singh. It was a deal based solely on opportunism. Then, not long after the new government was formed, in early March 1991, the Congress alleged that two plain-clothes police constables from Haryana had been stationed outside Rajiv's residence to snoop on him. The party demanded the resignation of the Haryana government, which was headed by Chandrasekhar's party. Exasperated by the allegation, Chandrasekhar himself resigned as Prime Minister. Chandrasekhar may have been at the helm for just seven months, but his term in office was marked by crisis and controversies. As a puppet of the Congress, he was persuaded to dismiss the DMK government in Tamil Nadu for its alleged links with the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, or LTTE, the Sri Lankan militant group. Next, he was asked to go slow on the CBI investigation into the Beaufort scandal, which had Rajiv Gandhi in the spotlight. He had also become Prime Minister at a time when caste and communal violence over the Mandal and Mandir issues were rocking the country. The implementation of the Mandal Commission recommendations, which provided 27% reservations for other backward classes in government jobs by his predecessor, VP Singh, had triggered caste violence in the Hindi belt. In retaliation, Lal Krishna Advani, president of the Bharatiya Janata Party, led a Rath Yatra from the Somnath Temple in Gujarat to Ayodhya in Uttar Pradesh to stir Hindu sentiments and unite Hindus. Riots broke out across the country as the Yatra travelled 10,000 kilometres and hundreds of people died. Meanwhile, the caste violence subsided only after the Supreme Court issued a stay order on the Mandal Commission report. The religious violence triggered by the Ram Janmabhoomi Babri Masjid conflict raged on. But the worst was yet to come. In January 1991, India was hit by a severe liquidity crisis and the country faced the possibility of a default in sovereign payments on account of a balance of payment crisis. Rising government expenditure, an increase in subsidies and populist measures such as loan waivers made matters worse. The economy took another blow when Chandrasekhar's predecessor, VP Singh, announced a loan waiver for farmers that cost 10,000 crore rupees. It crippled an economy already in crisis. Meanwhile, domestic and foreign debt was mounting. In 1989-90, India's foreign exchange reserves were abysmally low at $4.1 billion. By the next year, in 1990-91, they fell by half to a precariously low $2.24 billion. It was just about enough to cover one month's imports. There was even worse to come. Three months before Chandrasekhar became Prime Minister, the Gulf War broke out in August 1990, pushing oil prices from $17 a barrel to $36 a barrel. The war also led to a drastic decrease in India's exports to the Middle East, worsening India's balance of payments problem. Then, India's credit rating was sharply downgraded and raising credit overseas became almost impossible. Given the political uncertainty, Finance Minister Yashwan Sinha couldn't present the country's budget in February. Moreover, borrowing from institutions such as the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank had stopped as India had not committed to any structural reforms. Unable to borrow money and with foreign reserves around just $1 billion, the Chandrasekhar-led government took a critical and embarrassing decision. 20 tons of gold confiscated from smugglers were leased through a sale and repurchase option to raise $240 million from the Union Bank of Switzerland and avert the crisis. 
After three more rounds in July 1991, a total of 47 tons of gold were pledged by the next government headed by PV Narasimha Rao. Leasing gold had raised $400 million. The balance of payments crisis had forced Chandrasekhar's hand. Though a sovereign default was avoided, addressing the deep malaise that had seeped into the Indian economy became a matter of primary importance. This heralded the liberalization program that would not only revive the economy, but alter the country's economic destiny.